Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kimmy Farrell, and you're watching NTTV's online report. Hurricane Isaias is causing havoc along the coastline in the eastern portion of the United States. The hurricane made a landfall in the Carolinas last night, causing significant power outages and tornadoes. Other states in the area are beginning to prepare for rough conditions. CNN's John Loring has more on this story. Isaias is raking the east coast. I ain't really too much concerned, but yeah, a little bit, just a tad, but I've rode them out before. The storm caused multiple fires to break out in Ocean Isle Beach. The tempest strengthened to Category 1 status before slamming into North Carolina Monday night, according to the National Hurricane Center. Major threats continue to be heavy rainfall, flash flooding, storm surge, strong wind gusts, and isolated tornadoes. Anything is possible, I mean, as far as hurricane-wise. I mean, yeah, but, um, yeah, I wanted to come out just a little while. Parts of the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast are now preparing for Isaias. And we've got personnel on standby, whether it be, whether it be engineers to assist with technical assistance for, for flood response, or, or if we had to go up to another level, whatever we need to scale it to, we have that capability at the district, and we'll, we'll respond accordingly. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Although the storm is projected to weaken as it continues to make landfall, the head of the National Weather Service says this storm could be the strongest to hit the area since Superstorm Sandy in 2012. Twitter is expected to pay millions of dollars for allegedly mishandling users' personal information. Yesterday, the company disclosed in a filing that it could face a fine from the Federal Trade Commission. The FTC sent Twitter a complaint last month. The social media platform is accused of taking phone numbers and email addresses that users provided for security purposes and targeted ads and misusing them. The FTC states that this happened between 2013 and 2019. Last October, Twitter admitted that it inadvertently did this. The company says that they could be fined anywhere between $150 million and $250 million. The World Health Organization and China are discussing plans to come together to trace the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. This comes after two UN agency experts visited the country. Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said experts conducted, quote, preparatory consultations on scientific research cooperation with virus tracing during their two-week stay, which ended on Sunday. Wang says their talks touched on research in the areas of population, environment, molecules, animal traceability, and transmission routes of the coronavirus, as well as plans for further research. The two sides worked on a plan for China's contribution to the global tracing effort under a resolution passed by the World Health Assembly under the WHO. No word was given on when the effort will begin. Some good news is coming to North Texas as COVID cases in the Dallas area continue to drop in relation to previous weeks. Dallas County reported 382 new confirmed cases of the virus as well as three COVID-related deaths on Monday. These reported cases are the lowest number of new cases reported since June 16th and makes Monday the ninth consecutive drop in a 14-day average. Tarrant County reported 303 new cases with no COVID-related deaths. The county also reported hospital occupancy rate was at 65%, the lowest since June 21st. All hospital beds in Tarrant County are at 10% being used for COVID patients. This is the lowest rate since July 8th. Denton reported 94 new cases and one COVID-related death on Monday. The Trump administration awarded more than $35 million to the fight against human trafficking. The award comes from Justice Department grants and will be shared by 73 organizations in 33 states. The White House says the award will allow these organizations to provide anywhere from 6 to 24 months of transitional or short-term housing assistance to survivors, including rent, utilities, or related expenses such as a security deposit. This money can be used to help survivors find permanent housing, get a job, and receive occupational training or counseling. Yesterday, TCU's head football coach Gary Patterson apologized for repeating a racial slur when telling a player to not use the term in team meetings. The apology came after linebacker Dylan Jordan accused Patterson on Twitter of using the slur in a confrontation at practice. Center Kelton Holland said that the team's leadership council discussed the issue with Patterson and told him that the use of the word was unacceptable in any context. 
Patterson took to Twitter to give a public apology for his use of the slur later that day. School Chancellor Victor Boschini wrote in an email to student media that Patterson didn't use the slur against any player or group on the team. Some North Texas teachers are undergoing training to spot signs of distress in students. Alongside distress, teachers will be trained to see signs of abuse, neglect, and children in crisis situations online. Teachers have been trained to see signs of physical abuse. However, it has been harder to notice since school was made virtual due to the pandemic. In March, CNN reported a drop in child abuse reports across the country. However, those conducting the study fear the drop came from underreporting of cases. This is especially true since school personnel are often the ones who spot issues with children and report abuse. That is why North Texas teachers are undergoing training to spot these warning signs online. Mesquite ISD will utilize virtual counseling and focus on providing more interaction, such as drive-by visits. Dallas ISD is training teachers to pay attention to changes in behavior, homework, and journals. Apple replaces Saudi Aramco as the world's most valuable public company. Its stock rose more than 10% on Friday after the company announced blockbuster earnings. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the company posted revenue of nearly $60 billion in the three-month period ending in June. That's an 11% increase from the same period last year. Shares jumped another 2.5% on Monday, giving Apple a value of $1.86 trillion. Saudi Aramco had been the most valuable public company since going public late last year. Its worth is $1.76 trillion. Today is National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day. The day celebrates the history of the cookie and its well-earned place in many American cookie jars. The National Day calendar credits Ruth Graves Wakefield with creating the treats in 1937. The story says she was making cookies and ran out of baker's chocolate. She tossed in some semi-sweet chocolate and the rest was history and also dessert. Her legacy lives on through Nestle's Toll House brand. You can follow us on Twitter at NTTV underscore news for more of the latest updates. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to join us back again here tomorrow for more of NTTV's online report.